dear students today we shall be talking on the topic ink in mollusca we shall be particularly emphasizing on the ink in case of the cephalopods who have well developed ink glands and the different varieties of the inks which they are released as a part of the defense mechanism it is my request to you all before proceeding it is my request to you all to press the bell icon and subscribe my channel bio learnia when we talk about the cephalopod ink it is dark colored or luminous ink released into water by most species of the cephalopod usually as an escape mechanism the ink is released from the ink sacs located between the gills and is dispersed more widely when its released is release is accompanied by the jet of the water from the siphon an ink sac this is the ink sac here the ink sac it is an anatomical feature that is found in many cephalopod mollusks used to produce the defensive cephalopod ink when with the exception of the nocturnal and very deep water cephalopods all calidia that is the calides which are mostly squids octopus and cuttlefish which dwell dwell in the light conditions they have the ink sac which can be used to expel a cloud of the ink in order to confuse the predators um, this um, uh, very um, ink sac it it lies beneath the gut and it opens into the anus into which it its contents almost pure melanin can be squeezed its proximity to the base of the funnel means that the ink can be distributed by the jet water as the cephalopod uses it as a jet propulsion the ejected cloud of the melanin is bound by mucus particles so it forms a lump approximately the size of the cephalopod fixing the predators attention while the mollusk itself makes a hasty escape so usually this very cephalopod ink it is this very ink sac it releases it its ink and it is also used as a jet propulsion to confuse the prey so that it can have a time it can have a window period so that it can escape from its predator here in this very figure the ink sac of the um, uh, of the tenopteryx sicula is shown where in the ink sac is is shown just below the accessory nedimental gland along the intestine when we talk about this very cephalopod ink when the sepia it is frightened in terror and it is in terror it produces the blackness and muddiness this blackness and the muddiness in the water as it were a shield held in front of the body so this was the statement which was given by the aristotle in his book the history of animals book 4 it is 350 bc and it was translated by arthur lesley peck and edward seymour foster so there are other books as well the progression the uh, progression of the animals 1937 where in the aristotle has talked at length about the cephalopod ink cephalopods have stimulated the scientific minds artistic emotions and sensory palates of the humans for millennia and as the above quotations reveal th their ink has played a central role in the fascination aristotle wrote, wrote about the inking cuttlefish 2500 years ago in fact there aristotle himself has been described by his contemporaries and the modern scholars as the cephalopodian because he has written very much about the cephalopods with the smile that he is like the cuttlefish who obscures himself in his own ink when he feels himself about to be grasped 
today in this very lecture we will discuss the production of the ink production uh, this very functions in the natural environment including predator prey pre interaction the chemical constituent and their role in these functions and also its uses by the human beings including the development of the drugs therapeutics and the commercial and the industrial applications in the picture above you are able to see the drawing wherein the cattle releases the ink in order to stun the prey predator wherein in the lower case you are able to see the photograph wherein the uh, cuttlefish um, just releases the cloud of the ink to escape from the predator or to stun the predator the cephalopoda it is a class of the mollusca that appeared 500 million years ago and it lives in marine environment mostly cephalopods are represented by two major extant groups groups that is nautilidia and calidia so this is the example here in the nautilus and this is the example here in the case as the calidia octopuses as well the calides are organized into octopodiformes. These very octopodiformes, um, wherein um, they are also categorized into vampiromorpha or the vampire squids and octopoda, that is octopuses, and decapodiformes, which form constitutes the um, the squids and the cuttlefishes So um, the calides they are mostly the octopuses whereas the um, the um, uh, decapodiformes uh, or they are organized into these very collides they are organized into the octopodiformes and decapodiformes octopodiformes they comprise the octopuses whereas the decapodiformes they com comprise the cuttlefish and the squids the although cephalopods are represented by relatively few species that is approximately 700 but they are widely distributed in different oceanic habitats so here in this very picture you are able to see the this very humboldt squid dosidiscus that which releases the cloud of the ink where in this very photograph you are able to see the squid with an ink cloud in the background as well this is the squid and this it's ink cloud so that it can escape or it can have a window period for the time here in this very picture you are able to see the octopus um, who is escaping and inking and in this very photograph you are able to see the sea here that is Aplysia californica which releases the ink in order to avoid or escape from the predators this very sea here's use of the ink as a chemical defense it has been well studied and can be used as a model for exploring the cephalopods use of the ink as the chemical defense this is again the um, greater view of these very uh, photographs, the earlier photographs. Now, what is cephalopod ink? One of the interesting features that what is this very ink? What compri comprises of this very ink? It is composed, this very cephalopod ink is com um, composed of the secretions from the two glands. That one, we call it as the ink sac one we call it as the ink sac and other we call it as the funnel organ so the secretion from the ink sac and the funnel organ it comprises the cephalopod ink and it is it is mostly the it is if it is the black ink it comprises mostly the melanin and and um, um, and the um, mucus mostly from the funnel organ mostly the ink sac releases the um, melanin whereas the funnel organ mostly releases the mucus producing it is a mucus producing gland and it releases the mucus the ink sac it is a muscular bag when we talk about this very ink sac this very ink sac it is just like a muscular bag which originated as an extension of the hind gut it is modified hypobranchial gland 
the ink sac has been the object of the attention both casually and scientifically because of its dramatic black color. So here in this very picture, you are able to see that this is the uh, this is the ink sac here. This very is the ink sac. I will use the purple color. This is the ink sac here. What you are seeing here in this very case, and this is the funnel organ. So as I told you earlier, that mostly the ink sac. is related to the release of the melanin whereas the funnel organ is related to the release of the mucus and it is this very mucus and the melanin which get mixed up to form the ink in the case of cephalopods but later on we will also see the what are the chemical constituents of this very ink now talking about this very funnel organ it is the second gland contributing this very funnel organ what i was telling you about this is the funnel organ this here in this very case when you when you when you see the uh, cpr um, this lolly go upside down you will see a organ just underneath and this it is called as the funnel organ it is the second gland contributing to the ink secretion though much less is about known about the uh, it Uh, then that of the ink sac so it means we know well about the ink sac but very less is known about the funnel organ but verrill verrill he was a scientist or the scientist he in 1880 he provided illustrations of the funnel organ in several squid species and without giving organ a name but he described it in the in in the way such as uh, towards the base of the siphon that is the organ just towards the base of the siphon there are two erect round ear like flaps each with small papilla and a round wall raised median fold and the central papilla in front of them so he he doesn't name this very organ as the funnel organ it was later which the funnel organ was named but he tried to define it as the organ just like the organ towards the base of the siphon or the two erect rounded ear like flaps so the um, the varil he studied much about the about the uh, funnel organ now i was telling you that actually the ink is the combination of the secretions or the secretions from the two glands that is the ink sac and the and the funnel organ so despite despite the early recognition the funnel organ is a mucus producing gland so basically funnel organ is a mucus producing gland so talking about this very funnel organ its function in inking was not realized for some time but evidences of its involvement were there so the first when we talk about the ink it has the significant volume of the mucus now what led to the theory that the funnel organ is also involved in the ink is also involved in the secretion of the ink so when we talk that the ink has a significant amount of the mucus usually which is more than is present in the ink sac so at least something is coming from some some other source and secondly the mucus must come from somewhere in the area of the funnel siphon or the mental cavity where the mucus is produced so if ink has the abundant quantity of the mucus then it should it should come from somewhere in the area of the funnel siphon or the mental cavity and thirdly the fact the funnel organ due to its size and location appears to be the only mucus gland that could secrete this volume of the mucus and co release it with the ink secretion then what are the different forms of the ink several authors have stated that the com combined secretions of the ink sac and the funnel organ produce different amounts it leads to the ink of the different forms ranging from the diffused cloud to the discrete object with the general appearance of the squid and thus the it is also called a pseudomorph so this is one type that is pseudomorph it is one type so what does it mean it means 
it means that the organism has the ability to release different kinds of the ink by simply mixing the mucus along with the ink so it is the quantity of the ink and the mucus which mix different uh, you can say kinds of the um, ink or different shapes of the ink so it is interesting to speculate that these different forms might be produced depending upon the type of the predatory attack as well that is how much serious the attack is the ink secretion also depends on that very factor as well the work of the bush and robinson robison also um, also it is closest to addressing this very you can say uh, this very um, theory they showed that the members of a given species produced different forms of ink though each species one from was commonly produced one form was commonly produced than others and some deep water cephalopods produce luminous secretion as well which has the ability to glitter and according to the bush and robison the species of the sapiloid genus that is heterotuthis are the only cephano cephalopods which are known to release these luminous secretions from their ink sacs the shapes uh, taken by the ink releases are classified into the six types that is pseudomorphs one is pseudomorph the pseudomorph series the ink ropes the cloud or the smoke screens then diffuse puffs or the mental fills so these are the different kinds of the inks which are released by the these very cephalopods the other deep water cephalopods such as vampirotuthis inter uh, infernalis it releases a viscous fluid containing micro, microscopic luminescent particles from their arm tips so these are the luminescent particles being released by the vampiro tuthis infernalis which releases the luminescent particles from their arm tips and in fact this species does not have the ink sac the release of the secretions from both the ink sac and the funnel organ is under the neural control as well so there is evidence that the two organs are controlled by the separate neural pathways but this should be viewed with caution since results are from the few species only and are based on the classical anatomical track tracing techniques only so another um, what we say that how these are innervated the ink sac including its duct and the in anterior and the posterior sphincter muscles they are innervated by the visceral nerves so the, it means that the visceral nerves they are associated with these very ink sac which helps to release the ink from the lateral ventral ventral paleo visceral lobe and the posterior sub esophageal mass it is all they are also associated so in support of this bicot he was one of the scientists he demonstrated that the electrical stimulation of the paleo visceral lobe it also enhances the release of the ink the in innervation appears to be uh, glutamatergic so the innervation is glutamatergic which may involve ndma type receptors on the muscle in the ink sac duct so when we talk about this very glutamatergic agent or the drug this is a chemical that directly modulates the excitatory amino acid glutamate aspartate that is why we call it as the glutamatergic so as this very chemical directly modulates the excitatory amino acid that is glutamate aspartate system in the body or brain and ndma it is n methyl d s um, nmda sorry nmda n methyl d aspartate receptor and it is also nmda receptor or nmdar that is n methyl d aspartate receptor it is a glutamate receptor and ion channel found in the neurons the innervation of the funnel organ is less is less well characterized 
so young young who who was one of the scientists he described the funnel organ of the loligo which was innervated or which was being innervated by a branch of the posterior funnel nerve which originates from the antero ventral paleo visceral lobe of the posterior subesophageal mass so this is in this very picture i will just try to show you that this is the uh, this is the cerebral ganglia here and this is the um, this is the visceral ganglion here this is the visceral ganglion which is also responsible for the for the innervation of the uh, innervation of the this is the visceral ganglion innervation of the ink sac so this is the anterior anterior funnel nerve this is the visceral ganglion and uh, uh, this is the circumesophageal connective so these are associated this is the branchio buccal connective and this is the cerebro branchial connective and this is the branchial ganglion so then the, the nerves which i told you that they are very much responsible for the innervation and and this is the under the neural control this ink release is under neural control as well now what are the chemical constituents of the ink so chemical structures and the concentrations identified in the collected uh, identified and collected from the ink sacs of the cephalopods it is affected by the method of the collection so that is what does it mean it means that the chemicals found in the in the uh, you, you can say um, uh, in the ink sac it depends upon the method of the collection as well such as madaras madaras um, one of the scientists he uh, extracted the ink from the cpo teuthis australis and the he collected ink by two methods that one method we call it as a syringe method and other we call it as the milking method now in both the cases he got different results though with the addition of the certain chemicals chemicals so one method that is a syringe method used a syringe to collect ink from the duct um, directly from the duct um, from the end of the ink sac of the freshly killed squid and thus they tried to stimulate the natural release with as little manipulation and the damage to the ink sac as possible so in the first case the very sharp needle was inserted into the ink sac to the posterior part and the and the extract was taken so without harming the freshly killed squid and no damage to the possible ink sac now when we talked about the second one that is the and that is the you can say the milking method milking method so in this very method the dead animals which were dead within 24 hours whose ink sac was dissected out now the ink sac was dissected out the ink duct was cut and the contents of the ink sac they were milked milked into a tube um, just by running the forceps like this that is the um, ink sac was taken and it was milked like this whatever the contents were inside they were milked and they were taken with by the help of running the forceps on the ink uh, sac along its length which optimizes the amount of the ink collected so but it is more likely to include the material from the damaged tissue as well so it is by the pressure that the tissues were damaged and the damaged tissues will also come uh, along with the ink as well so there is possibility of that way as well so these are the two methods the both the method the both these methods the ink extracted by both these methods they were they were tested for the to know that what are what are the chemicals which are present in the ink so the syringe method they identified the dopa so by this very method that is the syringe method the dopa that is l34 dihydroxyphenyl alanine or l dopa was seen that is dopamine and the taurine as the constituents of the ink so dopa uh, dopa dopamine and the taurine they were known to be the constituents of the ink in the case of the method that is syringe method but this very method um, but failed to find this very epinephrine that is in this very syringe method the epinephrine that is a catecholamine derived from the tyrosine that, that is like dopa 
are the proteins are proteins that is neither tyrosinase nor other proteins they were found it is only the dopa dopamine and the taurine which was found by the syringe method but by, by this method the scientists were not able to find the epinephrine or the proteins in this very extract on the other hand when we talked about the um, milking method this very milking method where in the extraction was very harsh with the help of the forceps the damage the tissues were also damaged they yielded tyrosinase the tyrosinase was also found and the epinephrine was also found and according to the Mazaras et al it may be due to the disruption of the parts of the ink gland that normally do not release their contents into the ink sac so it may be because of the damage to the ink gland and normally these very constituents could not or may not be present in the ink otherwise so they are either due to the damage during the collection or by the autolysis and many times this can be present because of the autolysis after the death of the animal and before collection so what um, general composition of ink uh, which um, in the case of the um, cephalopods or in the case of the mollusca that is melanin or the melanin related compounds peptidoglycans amino acids metals and the toxins they are found to be the constituents of the general uh, you can say um, as the general composition of the ink now first of all we if we talk about the melanin it is a natural pigment that occurs in most organisms including animals plants fungi and bacteria where it has variety of the functions it is derived from the amino acids but but uh, but it is not it is not basically a protein rather it is a complex biopolymer that typically comes in two forms now what are those very two forms those very two forms are are uh, eumelanin eumelanin now i may be a little bit uh, writing about this very that is eumelanin and pheomelanin so the melanin it is in the form the, uh, of the uh, it is in two forms that is eumelanin and pheomelanin which differ in their molecular precursors as well then uh, we do have the melanin uh, related compounds or the melanin producing pathway in the ink gland has a number of important chemicals and they are also tyrosinase dopamine and dopa and enzymes such as tyrosinases peroxidases dopa chrome arranging enzymes they are also present so fucose rich and thirdly we do have the peptidoglycans where in the fucose rich peptidoglycans have been isolated from the ink of the several species of the squid then we do have the amino acids we do have the amino acids as well the cephalopod ink it is high in dissolved free amino acids Derby, one of the scientists, he showed that the six species of cephalopods, including two squids, that is Doryteuthis, that is Loligo, or uh, Loli Guncula, that is two octopuses, are Octopus vulgaris and Octopus bimaculides, and the cuttlefish Sepia officinalis have millimolar levels of the total dissolved free amino acids. So it means they have very little amino acids ranging from the 0.5 to 132 millimoles. And one of some of them are the taurine and tyrosine as well. Then we do have the we do have the constituent as the metal as well, metals as the constituent as well, and relatively high levels of the metals such as cadmium copper and lead have been found in the case of the cephalo in in the cephalopod ink then uh, certain toxins are also known to be in the in the ink of the cephalopods and they generally known to contain the toxins such as uh, we do um, we are very much familiar about the tetrodotoxin tetrodotoxin which is shortly known by the name of the ttx t t x ttx which is also known by the name of the ttx 
and if you are if you know that the puffer fish or tetrodon that very fish also has this very toxic component that is tetrodotoxin shortly named as ttx it is it is toxic to some marine animals and humans and has been found in the blue ringed octopus and um, and hapalo clinia uh, uh, lunulata um, is one of the another you can see organism where in this very ttx has been found this species has um, uh, this very um, ttx that is tetrodotoxin in its salivary glands and a bite releases enough ttx um, which is enough to kill a human being and especially uh, since an antivenom to ttx is not available till date we don't have any antidote to the ttx so the death rate um, is high very much high the blue ringed octopus usually this slivery ttx for capturing the prey and as a defense from the predator this species has has the ttx in its ink as well the ttx has been found in the ink of the certain uh, you can say octopus or the blue ringed octopus uh, slivery glands in the slivery gland as well as in the ink of the blue ringed octopus then let us have a little bit of idea about the inking behavior that how this their this very ink helps them to behave or there are certain inking behaviors in the case of cephalopoda such as ink as the anti-predator defense mechanism or the escape mechanism or ink as an alarm cue for the conspecifics or uh, ink has a hiding strategy it is used for the hiding strategy as well and it has a uh, role in the behavior around the eggs so two distinct behaviors have been observed in inking cephalopods the first is the release of the large amount of the ink in water so in the first case that is the escape mechanism or the defense mechanism there are two methods the first is the release of the large amount of the ink so in order to create create a dark so that this very smoke screen can help to escape the, the organism from the predator or to get the window period to escape from the predator and the second response to the and the second strategy it is the response to the predator to release the pseudomorphs that is false bodies that is smaller clouds uh, with with um, the clouds of the ink having the greater mucus so that which allows them to hold their shape for the longer period of the time so one is that the smoke screen is released and other the small clouds of the you can say ink is released which we call them as the pseudomorphs as well then, the, then these are expelled slightly away from this cephalopod in uh, in question which will often release several pseudomorphs and change the color that is blanch in conjunction with these release, uh, releases so whenever these releases are are made they they try to escape under this under this very you can say um, cloud or under this very smoke screen and these very pseudomorphs are roughly um, you can say the same volume as they look similar to the cephalopods so they um, the clouds are of the size as that of the uh, organism itself that is why we call it as a pseudomorphs then uh, we do have we do have the ink as the um, ink as the um, alarm cue for the conspecifics the second type the anti predatory chemical defense in the ink cephalopods is directly it is not by acting on the predator themselves but rather alarm cues for the conspecifics that is the 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 second behavior it is not to uh, to frighten the predator or to uh, to um, stun the predator but it is just released to alarm the conspecifics and this very uh, jetting behavior in the case of loligo is also seen wherein they they try to alarm their own conspecifics then we do have the um, hiding strategy the spotty bobtail squid one of the um, organisms that is a spotty bobtail squid it releases ropes of the ink longer than its size and hide among them and it also confuses as the floating sea grass leaves 
then we do have the uh, behavior around the x in this very case the octopuses also have been observed squinting ink at the snails or the crabs approaching their eggs so in order to uh, um, in order to you can say um, keep their eggs safe they have the behavior around the eggs and the numerous cuttlefish species they add a coat of the ink to their eggs so as to camouflage so that they can uh, keep their eggs safe from the potential predators now applications human applications we are mostly talking talking about the human applications that how human beings are you can say benefited many health benefits uh, have been ascribed to the cephalopod ink as a traditional medicine both in the western cult culture the cephalopod ink has the antimicrobial properties against the diversity of the organisms including human pathogens and the cephalopod ink has the potential um this very as the drugs as well and it is it has also potential as an anti cancer agent so and it has anti microbial properties as well it can act as anti potential anti cancer properties as well and, and uh, talking about the hemopoietic effects cuttlefish cuttlefish ink may enhance the immune responses by affecting the hematopoiesis for example it promotes the proliferation and differentiation of the granulocyte monocyte progenitor cells as well so that it can enhance the immune system and it has the hemopoietic effects then the anti hypersensitive action the ink from the loligo and the cipella uh, uh, intermis they have been reported to have the anti retroviral activity as well and the ink from the octopus inhibits the gastric many times the anti ulcerogenic actions or the anti you can say gastric anti gastric secretion or the anti retroviral activity has also been noted by um, for in case of the ink and the ink from the squid and octopus in, uh, inhibits the gastric secretion of the rats and thus has the potential in the development of the anti ulcerogenic drugs as well now anti it has also anti inflammatory activity and it is also noted for the some fraction of the squid ink that inhibits the gastric secretion um, by the and as an anti inflammatory activity it has also anti oxidant activity anti oxidant activity cephalopod ink has anti oxidant activity and it resides in both the melanin and the melanin free fraction of the ink so this anti oxidant activity it may be related to some of the other um, such as anti cancer effects as well as the photo protective you can say effects um, then uh, this very sepia ink as a pigment in writing art and cosmetics when we talk about this very sepia, sepia ink it is also used in the modern dyes and it is also used in writing and the arts and it is also used in cosmetics there there are evidences that the earlier drawings and the paintings of the earlier period they have the they have the inclusion of the cephalopod ink to write and to paint or to make the drawings cephalopod ink is also used as the food so it has been used as in different ways in the food industry the most common is it's used as the food flavoring Uh, or the it is used worldwide as a food flavoring agent and the most commercially sold squid ink is usually cuttlefish ink because of its superior flavor as well so it is also used in the food industry as well it has different applications it has the application of the drugs antimicrobial properties potential anti cancer properties hematopoietic effects anti hypersensitive actions potential anti ulcerogenic actions anti inflammatory activity anti Uh, oxidant activity and the uh, it it is used as the as the ink for the writing art and cosmetics and it is also used in the in the um in the food industry as well
So uh, this is all from the compilation from one of the good papers by the Charles D. Darby, that is Cephalopod Inc. Production Chemistry and Functions, and also the sources from the Wikipedia as well.